All right, so this is Stability and Cloud Development Part 2. Again, Chapter 6 for ESCI 211. All right, so what do we need to remember from this part? You need to remember what is a stable atmosphere, what is a neutral atmosphere, and what is an unstable atmosphere. So this is a stable atmosphere. If you see what we've got here is we have three lines. We have this blue line, which is the dry A back rate. For every thousand meters, I decrease 10 degrees as I go up. All right. We have the moist adiabatic rate, which is this red line. For every uh, thousand meters you go up here, you decrease six degrees. And then we have this environmental rate. In this case, for every thousand meters you go up, you only decrease four degrees. Now, if the environmental rate is less than this moist uh, uh, lapse rate, we have what's called an absolutely stable atmosphere. So if you force air, air up into an, abs uh, an air parcel up into an absolutely stable atmosphere, it will tend to spread out horizontally. So if a cloud forms in this air, what do you think would happen to the cloud? Right, it would spread out. All right, so using the definitions from the above section, a stable atmosphere uh, would have an environmental lapse rate smaller than the dry adiabatic lapse rate. For example, warm layers of air on top of cold layers. This would cause a stable atmosphere. Uh, warming of the upper atmosphere would cause a stable atmosphere, or what is referred to as warm evection. I don't know if I've explained this. In meteorology, air that moves up or down is usually called convection. Air that moves east to west, north to south, is usually called advection. So the ways of getting a stable atmosphere is either we cool the lower atmosphere. We can do this through radiational cooling of the surface or cold advection, bringing cold winds in to the lower parts of the surface or moving the air over cold surface. Um, or we can have what's called a subsidence inversion. That is, is we have this layer of air that sinks and it's uh, warmed as compression by compression. The problem is the top of the layer is compressed more, so it warms more than the bottom layer of air, so the top layer of air is warmer than the bottom layer of air. Now, how do we do this? Well, here's an example. So here's our upper layer of air right here, and then we're going to bring this down this way. Now, as you can see, the top layer is now warmer than the bottom layer. Okay, so I have cold air and warm air on top. And so we have a stable atmosphere. All right, what is a neutral atmosphere? That is when the lapse rate is equal to, the, the environmental lapse rate is equal to the dry adiabatic lapse rate. That's all it is. What is an unstable atmosphere? Well, an unstable atmosphere occurs when the environmental lapse rate, this black line right here, is greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate. So no matter uh, how we lift up the parcel of air, we go up a thousand meters. If you see this line right here is a thousand meters, doesn't matter what rate we use, if it's dry or if it's uh, moist, the temperatures of those is always greater 
than the temperature in the environment. So the parcel is warmer than the surrounding air, so it will tend to rise. But, so, and so we call this an unstable atmosphere. All right, so let's review that. The environmental lapse rate is greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate. The atmosphere is said to be absolutely unstable if this condition exists. Layers of the atmosphere are seldom absolutely unstable, but the environmental lapse rate is greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And this is a special condition called super adiabatic. All right, some more unstable air. Now, if the lapse rate is 3.4 degrees Celsius per 100 meters or greater, we get what's called auto convection. That means the air will spontaneously lift on its own. Now, if we put this into the ones we had before, then the environmental lapse rate has to decrease by 34 degrees Celsius for every thousand meters. That's kind of hard to come by. All right. So if the lapse rate is between the dry adiabatic lapse rate and the moist adiabatic lapse rate, what kind of environment do you think we're going to have there? Well, you'll have to wait for part three to find out. Because what you need for part two is what is a stable atmosphere? What is a neutral atmosphere? And what is an absolutely unstable atmosphere. And I'll see you in part three.